Hello, everybody. Today, we are going to learn about Haida art. We're going to learn a little bit about it. And then at the end, you're going to be able to do your own form of Haida art uh, with a salmon theme. So let's go ahead. Let's get started and learn a little bit about it. How do you pronounce the word Haida? Well, it's pronounced Haida. What does it mean? This is an English pronunciation of their native word Haida, which means person. Haida Gwaii is a group of islands, the Queen Charlotte Islands, off the northern coast of British Columbia, near the province's border with Alaska. Here's a little bit about the religion. Haida customs, beliefs, and history were passed down orally through stories, songs, and dances. They had stories about why certain things occurred. For example, the changes in season. There were also stories about each group and how they first appeared in this world. All of these stories were passed down to subsequent generations. In their culture, spirits were connected to all living things. The art was originally made for practical purposes. Bentwood boxes, totems, spoons, knives, bowls, dishes, all sorts of other household goods were decorated with family crest totems and other artwork that was unique to a particular family. The first humans. And this was told by a Haida artist, Bill Reed. Haida stories tell of how the first people emerged from the gigantic clamshell on the beach at Rose Spit. They got out with the help of Raven, who is the most powerful creature from myth time. Raven was wandering on the beach when he heard some noise coming from the clamshell. He looked more closely and saw that it was full of little human creatures. They were terrified by the Raven and the big world outside the shell. So the raven leaned his great head close to the shell and with the smooth trickster's tongue that had got him into and out of so many misadventures in his troubled and troublesome existence, he coaxed and cajoled the coerced the little creatures to come out and play with this wonderful shiny new world. The Pacific Northwest Coast people believe that salmon were actually humans with eternal life and lived in a large house far under the ocean. In the spring, they put on their salmon disguises and offered themselves to the villagers as food. The tribes believed that when entire fish skeletons were returned to the sea, the spirits would rise again and change into salmon people. In this way, the cycle would begin again and again the following year. Since the villagers feared that the salmon people would not be treated respectfully by people who had no knowledge of the taboos and regulations, they did not want to sell salmon to the first white men that arrived. So let's talk about the Haida art. There is a form line. So the form line of Pacific Northwest Native Indian art is the main line that outlines the body of the subject, whether it's, it is a person or an animal. The form line is usually black in color, but can sometimes be red. The thickness of the form line itself can change at various places and contains all the other shape used for a subject. Northwest Coast art is distinguished by the use of form lines and the use of characteristic shaped referred to as ovoids, U-forms, and S-forms. The main traditional colors of Pacific Northwest Native American Indian art are black and red. Black is the primary color used in the form line, which is the outline for the body of the subject. So here's some example of ovoid shapes on the top and on the bottom there are some examples of u-form shapes you can kind of tell because there's the o and then on the bottom it makes more of a u there's some more examples here's some examples of u a split u-forms at the top they kind of look like tongues a little bit but they've got the u and then they're split down the center there's an l form on the side there and then examples of different s forms so these are all different types of forms that are put together to create beautiful Haida art. Principles and elements of design. So we've got color. There's lots of different elements of design going on. The first one I want to talk about is color. An important element, element sorry, of the cedar plank masks is color. Black, blue, and red are imaginatively applied, creating balance within the entire piece. Color is used to define each of the parts of the head as well as shape. Traditionally, just as today, paints were made from the materials. Northwest Coast Indians produced red, 
from iron oxide, black from graphite, and white from lime and burnt clamshells. Blue paint from the northern part of the coast has been analyzed to be iron silica. All of these materials were mixed with oils, quite often salmon eggs, to make paint. Then we can look at space. There is an avoidance of empty space where a design former line will add to the interest of complexity. This embellishment is, however, done with sufficient restraint to maintain a proper integral balance of line form and carving. I really loved this example. Look at that really cool mural that was made right there. I believe it was called Pearl in Teeth. You can kind of see inside that mouth there might be a pearl. Geometric and freeform design. Sometimes designs seem to represent internal body parts, sometimes external appendages, and sometimes magical powers. These special designs are both angular and loose freeforms. A prominent form which is used to de um, depict the body parts is the U-form. It frequently depicts feathers and ears. Love looking at the feathers over here. Look how beautiful that U-form is there. Texture supplies variation in the design. The carved cross hatching can be echoed by the use of painted cross hatching. Curves are emphasized on nostrils, eyes, and lips by deeply incised carvings, contrasting color, or both. Nearly all lines, whether incised or painted, have a tendency to run parallel and taper to a terminal point to each end. The masks were carved in three-dimensional forms. We are going to make some Haida art. So boys and girls, I need you to get a pencil and paper. You're also going to need your markers uh, to create this art. Especially make sure you have a nice black marker available so we can get started. Okay, go ahead. Hi, okay, so we are ready to do our Haida art. I have Tilly with me. She's gonna help me out. She's gonna be following along and doing her own art. It's gonna be great. Uh, so we have a couple of examples of what we're gonna be doing. Now, this is a little bit different because obviously I've chosen one color and mine does not look as awesome as the ones that we just saw in the examples, but you're gonna be doing a guided drawing with me. And as we go along, um, I'll show you each step of the way and uh, you'll be using a pencil to begin with. And then when we're all finished, we will go over with a black marker to make the form line nice and thick. And then your salmon art will be completed. All right, so go ahead, get out your pencil and your paper. Let's get started. Okay, so the very first thing we're going to do is we need to draw uh, the back of the salmon, the spine of the salmon. So we're gonna make a line in the center of our paper that looks like that a C and it can actually go in a little bit too. It's almost like a C with a little bit deeper, kind of like a rainbow, but then you keep on going a little bit. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect um, because everything is gonna look totally different. Everybody's is gonna look really different. So it does not have to be perfect. Just keep following along and doing your best. All right, perfect. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start the head of the salmon. And we do that by creating a line right there. Perfect. And then we are going to make a box like that. Can you turn that into a box? Perfect. Okay, so we've got the head, we've got the spine. Now we're gonna go around over here. I need you to make a line right there. And then I need you to bring it down like an L, like that L form we saw. And then this one's also going to be an L form, but it's gonna go a little bit longer than the other one. Awesome, and now we're gonna connect these two pieces together. So draw a line and connect them. Awesome, okay, now we're gonna do that again over here. I want you to make a line down there. And now we're gonna make this line go here like a V. And now we're gonna make this line go out. Awesome. And now we're gonna connect these two. 
Perfect. All right, now we're gonna create the fin of the salmon. And to do that, we're gonna make two little triangles. One right here and one right there. Awesome. Okay. You guys are doing great so far. All right, now what we're gonna do, we're gonna add an L form right up there. And now we're going to take the top of our salmon right here and we are going to make it go, it's gonna go all the way around to the head down here, okay? So watch how I do it. I start from the top and I go around and then I'm gonna bring it all the way down here. Look at now I've got kind of my mouth happening right here. Perfect, perfect. Awesome, that's great because you can always use your eraser if you need to. Perfect job. Okay. Now, this is when we start adding um, a little bit of decoration, uh, some of the shapes in there. I'm going to go ahead and add a shape right there just to keep going with the theme of the salmon. Okay, let's connect the fin right here. So we're going to just kind of make a little arch together right there. And now I'm going to connect this space right here and I'm going to do that by bringing it around. Awesome. Okay, so now it's time to shape the nose of the salmon. Oh, I forgot. We forgot to attach his little back or her back. So we're going to do like that. Can you make another L? Perfect. Okay, so now we're going to do the salmon shape of the head. And the salmon head has a round part in the top. So can you make a round part right here? There's round part right there. And then we're going to erase this part right there. So after you do that, you can erase that top part right here. And now it's got its little salmon head. Okay, now I am going to add the mouth. And to do this, I am going to continue this around and down. It's kind of tricky, but you're just going to kind of make it go around and down. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And now we're going to create the bigger part of the mouth, and it's going to go up like around like this. I don't know if I like that over there. I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna make mine a little bit smaller. Every time, it's okay. You can make mistakes and you can make the salmon head. Perfect. Okay. So I've got my mouth right here. I am going to make my eye right here. an eye in the middle. Now I'm gonna outline that eye. I'm going to, actually, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm kinda of gonna erase these lines up here so you can really see my salmon head. And kind of erase the lines around it so the salmon head can really shine right there. And now I'm going to use this to outline the eye. Just go ahead and outline your eye. I'm going to erase that line right there. Okay, so now we've got that salmon eye in there. So now we're going to start introducing some of those um, ornaments, some of the forms that you had looked at before, the U shapes, the um, all the different things, the S forms, all of them. So uh, you can just kind of take a minute and add 
any kind of shape that you would like. I kind of like that tongue-like shape a little bit so that was there. You can add any kind of shape you'd like, like a, like a star shape if you wanted to. Up to you. This is the time where you get to add all kinds of super cool shapes. And I'm using the line in the center as a way to kind of make my shapes match on both sides. So they're symmetrical a little bit. They don't have to be symmetrical, but I like to use the lines as a way to help me with my design. All right, I am going to fade out this line a little bit, but I'm still gonna use it. Um, I'm gonna make a cool one that looks like this. I'm gonna go here and then I'm gonna bring it up. Do you wanna do something like that? You can, or you can leave it if you'd like. Just add all kinds of cool shapes in there. You can do anything you would like. Any kind of forms you would like. This is when you get to be really creative with anything you want to do. I'm gonna kind of add some waves up here because that's kind of fun. You can add any kind of shape you would like along the way. I'm gonna add a couple more like that. And you can take your time on this. It doesn't, remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. Any kind of designs you put in there is gonna look really cool. So I've kind of added some things to my salmon here. The next step is to kind of go through and erase any marks that you don't want to be there anymore. So I'm gonna kind of go through and just that center line, I don't really need that center line there anymore. It was helping me out before, but I don't wanna, I wanna make sure that I avoid that. Something that I do want to do though, so where the head is right here, I do want to see where that line is right there. I wanna actually arch around here and make a really strong line right there that kind of acts as the head of the salmon. That is a really great way to show that. That line kind of helps really understand where that salmon head is. Awesome. Just add any kind of designs in there you'd like. Again, I'm showing you some ways, but you don't have to do what I do. You can do whatever you want. I do wanna make sure I add the little nostril of the salmon. And then that eye, I'm gonna make sure that I really add an extra piece in that eye. So the eye really stands out. There we go. All right, so you can add as much detail as you would like. You do not have to follow my, my ideas there. Again, you can do anything you'd like on yours, but you just wanna add some type of design because it makes it look super cool. And then you're gonna have um, spaces to color and outline. Okay, now it's time for the next step. The next step is to outline your pencil marks with a black marker. Now I have a Sharpie, but you probably have a black marker from your Crayola set. And that would work too. Tilly's gonna use her, the black markers from the black set. Awesome, okay. So now I'm going to go through and I'm first gonna do the outline of the salmon on the outside. Remember we talked about the form line and having a really strong line. The outline is gonna be the most important part here. And after I go over it one time, I'm actually gonna go over it again 
because I really want the form line, the outside to really pop. Notice I didn't really match it perfectly, but that's okay. So I'm gonna go over it twice. So I already went over my outline one time, but before I do the insides, I'm gonna make this thicker. So I'm kind of going double line on my salmon outline to make it super thick, make it really pop out. And we'll only do it on the outline like this. The other lines will not be like this. Make it really pop out. So if you're still back on the steps where you're doing the pencil, that's totally fine. You'll be able to catch up to where I am eventually. It's taking me a while anyways. Sorry, everybody. Awesome, yep, let me make sure everything's connected. You just wanna make sure you're outside, everything is connected on the outside. All right, um, now I'm going to go through and I'm gonna be outlining all of my pencil marks. So everything I did in pencil, I am now going to go over with my black marker. And I'm going really fast. You will not be going this fast. Uh, you will be able to take your time. And if you don't finish during our time together, you can actually keep on working on it and then upload it later. I am a very speedy um, pencil tracer here, but I do want you to be able to take your time. So as I'm outlining though, I'm gonna start thinking of the colors that I want to use. And as we were talking before, you know, red, black, blue, and green, those are the kind of colors that were used a lot in, in this type of art. Now, this is your art though, and you can do whatever you would like to do. You can use whatever colors that you choose to do because it is your own art piece. We're just kind of making it the Haida themed, but you can do anything you would like. So you can kind of be thinking about what you want it to look like and what kind of colors you want to be adding to your art piece here. Now, one thing you might wanna know is that I have been doing it along the way. I've been filling some of my art in with black. So like right here, I'm gonna fill that in black. Some of the, some of the pieces I'm gonna fill in with black just because I think um, it would look really cool to have that appearance. When we talked about space earlier today, the, uh, the black really helps show the different space. Ooh, like right here, I'm gonna color in this space with black. So as I'm going, I'm just kind of deciding what kind of places I want to have the black being shown there. Sometimes I'm just adding an extra design inside my shapes that I'm drawing. And that's okay too. Even as I'm going with my black, you can kind of tell that I'm adding things as I go. Just when I feel like I need something in an open space, I am adding it along. Cool. So now I'm gonna decide on what colors I'm gonna use. Now, if you wanna have more of a black background, you totally can. If you wanna just do lots of different colors, you totally can. If you wanna do what I did on this one and just color the whole thing one color, that's totally fine also. Um, this time around, I last time I did that, so I'm gonna kinda add some different colors this time to mine. And again, you can do whatever you would like. So, that. I'm gonna just do some of my pieces red in here and I'm gonna, I'm a pretty fast color everybody, but I would really like to make sure you're staying inside the lines. So I'm just gonna choose a couple things that I wanna add to be red. I am gonna stick with the, the colors um, that are, are mostly used for the Haida art, the blue, the green and the red and the black, but I'm just gonna show you how I would fill in a couple of these. All right, so I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna let you continue to work and then I'll show you my finished product 
And then hopefully by then, or in a couple of minutes or so, you should have your finished product. And remember when you're finished, you're gonna to wanna to upload yours to Seesaw so we can all see it. All right, so I'm gonna pause the video and you may go ahead and get started. Okay, so Tilly and I, we just finished our art. Tilly, why don't you go ahead and show us? Awesome, that's a really good, I love how thick your line is on the outside. This is what mine turned out to be. Uh, and if you liked doing this, you can make another one, or if you want to, you can try to do a turtle or any other kind of art that you would like. I hope you really liked watching this and I can't wait to see what you all have come up with. All right, bye-bye. <laughs>